Thank you for tuning in to the first edition of Inside Oswego Speedway here in the 2015 season. And we get it kicked off with the Novella Super Modified kickoff from last Saturday night. Danny Connors Jr. on the pole position. Double O Joe Gosick driving a John Nakotra machine in the opener. It's his regular ride. Not quite ready for the opener last Saturday, so Gosick slips behind the wheel of the third Nakotra racing machine for the Super Modified event this past weekend. Connors darted out into the early lead, but early on we had trouble down the front straightaway. The nine of Steven Joya lost the steering on that machine. Dave Cliff in the 06, nowhere to go. Both cars would be done for the night. On the restart, Jeff Abold in the A&P number 05 really had that car moving well on Saturday. Won a qualifying heat race, makes an inside move on Dave Gruel to move up into the top three. But further behind, charging through the pack, were Sitterly in the seventh and Bob Bond in the 47. Those two cars were tied together pretty much the entire night flying up through the field as they work to the outside of Gruel down into corner number three. Sitterly and Bond would continue their charge later on with Connors and Gosick still leading out in front. A little bit further back in the pack, Sean Goslin, Michael Muldoon, Tim Snyder, and Pat Lavery in the number 22 with a good battle going as well just back there in the top 10. Snyder the zero, Lavery in the 22, dice it out down the back straightaway but meanwhile Sitterly and Bond managed to make their way past Abel down the front straightaway now trying to give chase to the leaders Connors and Gosick. Later lap 11, Gosick in that double zero machine swings to the high side, dips back down to the low side into corner number one and he takes the race lead so Joe Gosick after starting on the outside of row number one, ran second early on, snags the lead from Connors into the first corner, Sitterly follows him through. Bond would eventually do the same in the 47 as Jeff Abel and Bobby Santos battle inside of the top five. Lap number 27, Sitterly finally works to the low side of Gosick into the first corner to take the race lead as they battle on down the back straightaway looking to put a lap now on the 11, the rookie Eric Iosu. However, caution lights would come on as the 51 of Michael Muldoon spins right in front of the leaders. As a result of the caution coming out before the completed lap, Gosick would go back to the race lead, but on the restart, the double zero pushes a little bit high between three and four, Sitterly rolls around the outside to retake the lead. Bond would dive to the low side in corner number one to take the runner up spot. Gosick would try to give chase back there into second with Santos riding in fourth as Gruel in the 50 and Abold in the 05 do battle in the top five. But as the race wore on, nobody would have anything for the Roselli Northern GNI Homes number seven of Otto Sitterly as he charges on to his fifth opening night victory at Oswego Speedway ahead of Bond in the 47. Gosick the double zero in third. Santos and Gruel would round out the top five ahead of Jeff Abold, Keith Champagne in the Osetic Racing number 55. Sean Goslin, Dave Danzer battled up to a top 10 finish ahead of Pat Lavery in the double dudes. No, I'm not really sure. I think usually the track is pretty good opening night, not too slippery and stuff. And, uh, you know, we got real good race cars. And uh, so Joe ended up third, fourth. Um, that's real good. You know, that car is getting older and I keep putting that car down, but just goes to show you, you put a really good driver in it's still pretty good. No, I would have been nice to be a little closer to Otto, but um, he uh, had us covered tonight. Nah, we're not sure. We'll probably uh, run a few in the beginning and see how it goes. That's a pretty good car. Otto's uh, refined that car for years and you know, it's, a, it's an older car, but it's a real good race car. So um, I want to thank him and the whole crew uh, and everyone that uh, let me drive that tonight. It's a privilege to drive for a top team like that. The month of May is here. And that means the fast family action at Oswego Speedway is ready to go green. Saturday, May 23rd, it's the Port City Super Spectacle. Featuring the Isma Super Modifieds and Novella Super Modifieds on the same track, same night. Plus the Pathfinder Bank SBS Tony White Memorial. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. It's the Port City Super Spectacle at Oswego Speedway, Saturday, May 23rd. Bring the entire family with kids 16 and under free. The nightcap on Saturday night featured the Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super Kickoff, and it would be the 87 machine of Matt Magner starting on the pole position with Jason Simmons in the 98 on the outside, and Simmons in that brand new Hedger Fabrication chassis would dart out into the early race lead out of corner number two, bringing Magner, Mike Bruce in the 22 in tow, along with Anthony Lacerdo in the 01 of Dalton Doyle down there into corner number three as the field files down the back straightaway. Mike Bond started further back in the pack as a result of setting fast time and time trials. Here he works the top side of the speedway going around your 2012 champion Craig Harris and defending classic champion the 93 of J.J. Andrews. 
But up front, it was Mike Bruce in the 22 trying to move to the high side. He pushed a little bit too high. Coming out of corner number four, and that left the low lane open for Doyle in the 01 to move to the low side into the first corner, trying to bring the 18 of Andrew Shartner and the 50 of Dave Cliff along with him out of corner number two and down the back straightaway. Doyle now up into that third spot in that 01 machine as they work down the back stretching into corner number three. Shartner trying to work up on the high side out of that fourth corner, but trouble would strike on the front stretch. Magner, who had a great run going in that runner-up position, spins around down the front straightaway. That would bring the caution lights out and move the 01 of Doyle up into the runner-up position. And on the restart, Doyle in that car that he built with his own two hands, a Hawk chassis, small block super, the only one in existence, would drop to the low side down the back stretch into that third corner and take the race lead from Simmons, bringing Shartner in the 18 along with him. As Simmons moves high, the 22 of Mike Bruce, the 50 of Cliff, and the 13 of Russ Brown would eventually also make their way by on the inside of the speedway. But out in front, once Doyle got the lead, he never looked back. Shartner tried to chase him down on more than one occasion. With the checkered flag in the air, the opening night win goes to the 0-1 of Dalton Doyle. Shartner came home in second. Cliff with a podium finish in his first run, driving the Barbo Racing number 50. Russ Brown in the fourth spot. Mike Bruce rounding out the top five ahead of J.J. Andrews, Jason Simmons, and Alex Hogue. As Dalton Doyle pulls into Turning Stone Resort Casino, victory lane for his third career. Pathfinder Bank, small block super victory. Oh my God, I've been waiting for this day for so long. I mean, back when I was driving go-karts, I wanted to build a go-kart and I wanted to win a race in the go-kart. Started racing here, I wanted to win a feature. I won a feature. Built my own small block last year and I just won a feature at Oswego Speedway with a car I built with my two hands. I'm ecstatic. This is my car. I drove, I picked the tubing for this thing up. I polished every piece of tubing, I notched every piece of tubing, I cut every piece of tubing, bent it, welded every square inch of it, built the body, everything. It got too tight, we just got too tight. Um, it was weird, normally the car's pretty balanced, the thing I like about my car, but went from real loose at the beginning to good, to real tight all in 30 laps. Usually you don't see that out of that. Um, just, Dalton did a heck of a job. Uh, I wasn't gonna touch him once the car got tight, and my guys did an awesome job. You know, we. Uh, we have to fight and battle with the spring rubber rule and, and uh, a lot of the rule changes that they made and it's made it a lot you know, difficult to figure the car out a little bit. But Yeah, we struggled a little bit in the heat race with this car. We made a couple adjustments and uh, started eighth. Andrew and I had a great race coming up through the field. It was a lot of fun. We passed each other a couple of times and uh, that middle of run, we had 10 or 12 laps. I was, you know, I started running Dalton and Andrew down because they were kind of uh, racing each other a little bit and then that last restart, my car really never came back. But. I knew Russ was back there, he gave me a shove a couple times, but you know, it was all clean and a lot of fun. Uh, definitely a little better night tonight with a small block and a super, but uh, we'll take it. The month of May is here. And that means the fast family action at Oswego Speedway is ready to go green. Saturday, May 23rd, it's the Port City Super Spectacle. Featuring the Isma Super Modifieds and Novella Super Modifieds on the same track, same night. Plus, the Pathfinder Bank SBS Tony White Memorial. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. It's the Port City Super Spectacle at Oswego Speedway, Saturday, May 23rd. Bring the entire family with kids 16 and under free.